Okay guys, we are back with the 201 here again today, making a little bit of progress. I did go ahead and clean all the parts for the upper tension assembly and put them on the machine. And I will link in my description my video that shows how you can take all these pieces off and put them back on properly. So that, that won't be shown in this video, you have to go watch the other one. But I've been cleaning a lot of pieces today. I've got all these cleaned up. This is your face plate. I got that polished up with my car polish ready to go because what I want to do now, my next step is going to be, I did want to mention this wire brush is not like you would use if you were like cleaning welds or something. It's These steel bristles are pretty soft. That's probably why I've kind of destroyed the end of this. But I will go ahead and wire brush the back of these pieces just to get them cleaned off and then wipe them off with a towel. Don't do the chrome. Obviously you'll just get that full of scratch marks. So that you can just hit with your car polish. I really, I just wipe that piece off with a towel. But I've got all of these pieces over here cleaned up. What we got is the bobbin case, the slide plate of course that I just showed you. Get over here where you can see them. The bobbin case is cleaned up. Slide plate, needle plate, feed dogs. This is a retaining clip that positions the uh, the uh, bobbin case as it rotates in the machine, like this. This has to drop in like that. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to start putting some pieces in here. And then I can test the machine to make sure it picks up the needle or the thread. Before I put that in, I'll just explain to you on the side here, when you drop your bobbin in there on the side, these two screws are your adjustments for your bobbin tension. Uh, this one here holds this spring steel on the bobbin case, and this other one, you screw it in or out, in will tighten it up to put more tension on your thread, and out will loosen it up to take... Uh, the tension off of the thread in the bottom case. So this will drop in here like this and I'm at a, kind of a strange angle because I'm not trying to, I'm trying to not block what we're doing here. You can see these two little spring clips right here. Right there's one and there's one. You push these out. Now the trick is going to be to bring this in under that clip you got, have to get that in and slide this point under this piece. Come to this other side and pop this in. I'm going to need the point. You pull this out, drop it in, and then just wiggle it around until it drops in to position like that. I'm going to rotate it so you can see better. A clip there and a clip here and this pointy piece went under the hook. The fact that there's a little bit of play in here lets the thread pass through. It's pretty simple. You go on just like this and two screws will hold it on. I've got the feed dogs in and these two screws just loosely tightened and the reason I'm doing that is what I want to do. There is a little bit of play in there and what I want to do is put the needle plate on just hold it with my finger about in the position I can look through here and see where the screws are going to hold it and I just want to make sure the feed dogs have clearance on the needle plate and I can see that that it's okay it's not rubbing on anything so I'm going to go ahead and tighten those up and then I can put this on all right now that we've gotten to this point uh, if you've been watching the other videos you know that I took the needle bar out and this is the screw that holds it in and lets you adjust how the foot is positioned side to side according uh, to line up with the hole in the needle plate. And this one, uh, just by dumb luck, I was kind of looking at this and squaring this up when I put it in. So that's right on. But let me show you what happens if you, if you or somebody before you messed around with this and they didn't know what they are doing. What will happen is when you lift your presser foot, if this isn't at the correct height, as you, your machine goes to make a stitch, boom, the needle bar is striking the foot. That means it's too high. So what you'll have to do is come in here, loosen the screw, like so. I didn't tighten it all that much. 
because I knew the height yesterday was sort of a guess. And then with it just a little bit loose, I can just gingerly slide this down, wiggle it back and forth and move it down. And what I want to have happen here, okay, right there, got to line it up. You can line the presser foot up with your feed dogs too at this time. What I want to do is have the needle come, bar come all the way down like so and not strike this foot. As long as it's not striking this foot, what I'm doing is I'm optimizing the amount of space under my presser foot without having the, the needle bar hitting the foot. And, and right there you can see if I was coming up over some heavy material, this is still a little too high. So I'm going to take this down, wiggle this down just a little bit more. Because I don't want to, I don't want to sacrifice any of the space under the foot in case I'm sewing something heavy. But I also don't want the, uh, don't want it striking the foot. That looks pretty, pretty good right there. So that, so at this point you're going to want to tighten up, tighten up this screw right here. Okay, that was really loose. So I'm just going to double check everything here while it's still not super tight. I can move my foot over a little bit like that and line up the hole in the needle plate with the foot. And now I can go ahead and tighten that down. I've got a size 16 needle in the machine and just some standard sewing thread. I've got the upper part all threaded. You can't see the whole thing. It's out of the picture, but I'm going to go ahead and take my bobbin and have the thread come off this way. And go ahead and put the bobbin in the bobbin case. Slide my thread here and pull it this way. Like so. And now we will see gotta keep a little pressure on this thread there see the see the hook picked up the red thread and you can see it coming over the top grabbing the other thread and then when I get to here I can just pull that black thread up through the bottom okay now I want to just see what kind of a stitch I'm getting I have no idea how accurately that uh, The tension in the bobbin case is. I'm just. We still don't have a motor on the machine, but it kind of put eases your mind when you uh, actually make a few stitches. You can see every time. See the thread going around there. Comes down. Okay, there it goes. Thread goes around and back up. The thread. The hook picks up the uh, upper thread every other time it goes around. It's not every single time. And it makes two rotations when it picks up the thread. Okay, so press your foot up. That's not the way to pull it out, but looks pretty good. There's the back, the black thread on the back of the yellow fabric and on the front. I can just barely see the black thread, but the hole is a little bit larger than it needs to be with a size 16, so that's fine. And it looks like there's a little oil on there too. So that's all good. No worries about the machine working, but there's still a lot of work to do. I haven't even touched that motor yet. If you can feel this rubber grommet on the back, it's still soft, so, and this wire feels good. so. I don't see any point in putting new wires on this motor. It would just be extra work that doesn't need to be done. Curiosity is getting the better of me here, so I am going to go ahead and I've got this blunt screwdriver here. Be very careful if you go to take out these Bakelite screws that hold in your brushes. Uh, go really easy on them. When I put these back in, I'm going to just finger tighten these. So there's the screw that holds in the brush. I can pull this brush out and I'm very happy to say that 
more than half. This machine is a 1950 model, so it's uh, 73 years old, and more than half of the brush is still in the machine here. So either these were replaced, or this is the original brush. I'm going to say it's original because it just doesn't look like there's that much wear on this machine. So let's see what the other side looks like, see if there's any surprises. These are these Bakelite caps are prone to chip, so be real careful with that. And you also have to remember this, the way that these come out. They, after being used, they're going to have a little curve to the end of the brush, and you want to make sure that curve that's in the brush matches the shaft going through the motor. I mean, it's not the end of the world. If you put it in the wrong way, it'll probably still work. But uh, it's just better to put it in the way it came out. All right, I'm going to cap this back up, and then I can take it out in the garage and get some WD-40 on it to get it clean. If you watched part one of my videos on this machine, you saw me take off these cover plates from the bottom that cover these gears. And what you're going to want to do is just go ahead and turn the hand wheel and put a little oil on these gears. I've already done that. You want to do these gears and where it comes through this shaft. Now, it, you, it won't be visible. I won't be able to show you, but on, this is a bushing that goes through the casting that the shaft is running through. And right up here, there is a small port opening where you can get oil to go into this bushing. And it's the same on this end. So on both ends, you won't see those. You might need to take a flashlight and, and take a peek up in there. You'll find those. That's going to help a lot on this shaft rotating in this bushing. So I've got that done. And then you're going to want to oil all your points down here that need oil. Where these shafts run into this pin on the end, the oil will run right in there. I'm just using regular sewing machine oil. Don't use anything else other than sewing machine oil because it leaves a residue and that's what tarnishes everything. This will evaporate away and leave no residue. And another thing I want to do on these gears is a little tiny bit of grease. What I will do is just put a, I'm just using the back cover here as a little mixing and I'll take a little dab of grease and put it on there and then I'm just going to go ahead and add the oil, add my oil to that grease set that out of the way and I'll just mix this together because I don't want a big big chunk of grease on there and that's going to slow things down and then I can just put a little bit of grease on that gear it doesn't it doesn't need a lot Just enough to help the oil stick so it doesn't fly off when you're running the machine. Now I know other people might do it a different way, but this is the way I like to do it. And I've got a nice light coating of grease mixed with the oil on there and that's all it's going to need. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other side. And then we can put on the uh, cover plates. Just come in here like this, you'll see this gear, I just, I don't want to get my screwdriver stuck in there obviously, but just very carefully get a little bit of that grease in there. I got have a little bit left, so I'll put that in. Alright, that's enough to... Just help hold that oil on the gears. And the next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is there's just two screws that hold this cover on. This goes like that. I'll have to run a few screws into that. Then the front cover is two pieces this U shaped piece and this uh, round cap that goes on the bottom. This piece here you will have to put it over the shaft like this and put your screws in. And then you can go ahead and this has got a little cutout on this side. You can screw that on. So I'll get that all done and then we'll continue.
I've got both these covers back on the machine. Everything is looking good down here. It's all taken care of. But before I go back on the top, I want to show you this. This is the 201-2 has the ability to drop the feed dog. So what you do is you unscrew this thumb screw, pull it out, drop the feed dogs just by moving this little lever, and then you can run the thumb screw back in. Now that's going to keep the feed dogs in the down position when you're in the machine. Another nice thing about this is there is a bushing right here with a fork and you can get in here to oil that while it's in the down position it makes it a lot easier. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back up and because we don't know how many people have had their hands on this machine in the last 73 years I see a little bit of wear on this screw so somebody has loosened this what this does is it adjusts the height of the uh, the feed dogs up above. So I'm not going to mess with that. It seemed fine when I was do, uh, test sewing, but if something was awry, uh, going wrong up on the top, that's where you would raise or lower the feed dogs by loosening this screw right here. I've got the light back on the machine. There was just one screw right under here you have to put in. Make sure you have the, the little registration pins up here lined up with the casting of the machine. And it's starting to feel like we're making a little, little bit of progress now. The machine's starting to look pretty good. I did take this thread guide off here. It's just one screw if you want to take that off to clean it. And then when you are winding your upper thread, when your thread comes around here off of the spool pin that's going to be replaced here later, uh, you can slide this back and forth so that the thread will wind down the bobbin back and forth and back and forth so it doesn't pile up in one spot. So that's why this is on a slide. There's a little cutout here for that. And yeah, it's starting to look pretty good. We, I know what the machine's sewing now. I still have a lot to do. I have to clean the hand wheel, get the electronics over here back on, check the motor out. And I think in the next episode what I'll be doing is uh, I'll get the motor all ready to go and get the machine all buffed out and all cleaned up. And then it'll just be attaching more components. So hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a comment down below, it helps out the channel. The 201 is starting to look pretty good. All the decals are intact on the bottom here. And uh, it's been a lot of work and there's a lot more to do, but uh, it'll be worth it in the end. Once it's all done. I still have some polishing to do on, the, on this part of the post and on the back here, but otherwise it's coming along pretty nicely.